All right, guys, so we're going to look at water and how we use it domestically with kind of an emphasis on sanitation. So we all know that humans need fresh, clean water. So we use water for a lot of things. We talked about how we use it for agriculture and industry, so farming and making goods and making electricity, but we also just need it for ourselves, so that domestic use. So we're going to look at domestic use today. So remember, domestic use is anything that has to deal with like running our house. So washing our dishes, taking our showers, flushing the toilets, and most importantly, we want fresh, clean water to drink. So in the past, people would commonly use the streams and rivers to dispose of human waste. They didn't want to have all this human waste in their streets where they're walking. So kind of like out of sight, out of mind, they'd just put it in the rivers and streams because it would float down the stream or float to the, the bottom. And they didn't think of like it anymore. So while it looked nice and clean, this actually caused a lot of people to get sick because they still used that same river or stream or water source to drink the water that they needed to survive. So while they were disposing their human waste in this river or stream, they were also drinking from this river or stream, which is really gross. So because of that, we were getting some contaminated water and people tried to fix that. So as people tried to move away from just like putting it in the rivers and streams that they were drinking out of, they were building these outhouses. So we might have seen some outhouses before. Um, it's basically just a pit toilet, a hole in the ground and the stuff goes down the hole um, and they would just bury the waste in the ground and stuff like that but people are still getting sick and they weren't really sure what was going on um, but here's a good image here to kind of explain what was going on so here we have a person using the outhouse and it goes in the outhouse and it's underground all is good but um, water not just flows on top of the ground but water also flows underneath the ground so it likes to move through all the porous stuff all the little holes and crevices so as water travels under the ground it's going to pass through whatever they were burying in the ground so their outhouse holes and it still was getting into the well so a well is just a very deep hole dug into the ground until it reaches water and that well water is what they were using for drinking water and the water that flowed through the ground through their outhouse water was going into their well water so people were still getting contaminated water and still getting sick so um, in contaminated water there's lots of pathogens so these are disease carrying bacteria or viruses or parasites that are commonly found in human and animal excrement so waste and it can cause disease to the host that they attach to so if you're drinking water that's contaminated and full of pathogens or bacteria and viruses or parasites even it can cause you to get sick in a bunch of different ways so we just have a few here for you to look at so by the mid 1800s health officials health officials started to recognize that there was a connection between between disease outbreaks and the contaminated public wells so those deep holes that get dug underground to get that fresh water from underground um, that they were using to drink from so their solution was to improve a sanitary sewer system where the water was going to get treated and that treated water was going to eliminate any diseases caused by human waste. So this is basically what we're using today and we're going to look at that a little closer. So gross sewage water turned into wonderful drinking water. So how is it going to work? So let's look at this diagram here and how it works. We're going to start at the top left where it says how it works and the first step is the screening step. So gross sewage water is going to move through these screens and that screen is going to catch any large items that get like go through these like the sewage like drains and that can catch any large toys or um, any large debris um, that goes down through our drains and into our sewers and it like kind of is the first thing that like screens the water now that water after it's been screened through and all the large stuff gets caught into it's going to settle number two into these big basins and while it's settling, things that are less dense float to the top and things that are more dense float or sink to the bottom. And some mechanical arms, they skim around the top and scrape out all the sludge. And 80% of the solid waste in that water that went through the screening part is now removed. After step two, it's going to be the spray down. So this is when water is then removed from our basins and it's going to get sprayed into a honeycomb material. 
where the bacteria that uh, remain are going to re- eat the solid stuff that's left behind. And it can get pumped from this spot into our rivers and oceans because it's clean enough then or um, sent to a plant for more filtration. And that means that we're going to try and make it even more useful for drinking or human uses. So if it's going to go back to a plant and not back out into our rivers or oceans, the next step is the squeeze step. So this is where we're going to take all our filtered solids and we're going to heat it up um, to 98 degrees Fahrenheit and treat it for three weeks. So the water is hanging out here for three weeks. And as the water is hanging out here, the water is squeezed out and the material goes from um, goes to the farms to fertilize the cotton or um, feed animals from this step. It's clean enough there um, that we can use it for that. But if it keeps going, it's going to go into the next stage, which is the suck stage. So the water that goes from the squeeze stage, it's all squeezed out, goes into a new stage where it's going through micro micro filtration and it's going to go get sucked through all these tiny porous straws. So think of really porous means just basically an empty hole um, that water can travel through. So think of a bunch of really, really tiny straws all lined up and the water is going to get sucked through them and that's going to um, remove any more contaminants. And then they're going to take that water and sift it. So reverse osmosis membranes are going to pull out any chemicals or bacteria or any super small contaminants. And then they're going to put that into the last stage, the shine stage, where basically all the sediments and all the junk and big things and solids and stuff are like removed. And just to be extra safe, they're going to take that water and they're going to put it through some ultraviolet light. And that's going to like wipe out any of the leftover microscopic contaminants or bacteria and um, that didn't get removed from the reverse osmosis. And after that, it is definitely clean enough for you to drink. So at the bottom right hand corner, we have clean drinking water that you could use to drink water or whatever else you need to use it for. So it started at the top where it was really gross and brown, had a lot of stuff in it, goes through a huge filtration process and is super sanitized uh, where it's clean enough for you to drink now. And that is what we do with our water today. Now, good sanitation means very healthy people. So with good practice of sanitation and cleaning water, more people are healthier today like today than they ever were before. Now, sanitation, though, is still a problem in places that do not have access to clean drinking water or sanitation methods. Um, and this typically affects those that live in poor uh, countries. So um, this picture is, I believe, in India. Um, where they use this, like this is a picture of the water, like a river, and the people, they use this river for washing their clothes, um, and they also use it for anything else, like they also drink out of it. Um, They bathe in it. It is like their main source of water. They do everything in this water. And they do not have good sanitation practice here or access to be able to do a sanitation practice like we use here. Um, So these people don't have very clean water to drink from. Um, 2.3 billion people still don't have access to a sanitary toilet that you and I are used to today. And 844 million people in the world, so 1 out of 10, still do not have access to clean water. So they are drinking water that is contaminated. So that water in those examples where like, there are pathogens and parasites and stuff that can make you really ill. So 1 out of 10 people are still drinking water that can make them very, very sick. So for your homework, I need you to write a couple sentences on why you think it's important that we keep practicing good sanitation of water and um, uh, how you think we can help like other people in other countries or like make it more accessible to people around the world.